What's up, everybody, and welcome to Slam Sessions, right here live on Facebook Live. I'm your host, Albert Albanese, and as always, if you want to get involved, comment here on the bottom. Uh, we're going to be talking a lot about wrestling tonight, and um, i talk to you a little bit about some of my future plans, and we're going to uh, sort of, you know, have a little bit of an open conversation about uh, all the big things that have been going on. Um kind of dig into everything uh, a couple of things that i wanted to talk a little bit about because i don't want to you know be on here excessively long probably about a half hour probably about like until 9 30 um so my idea is that we'll talk a little bit about the nia Jax becky lynch situation um and you know the, the constant changing of the card at survivor series um also a little bit about nxc war games and then uh that pretty much be it, you know. I'm starving. I haven't eaten yet, so I'm planning on being here for on here for about a half an hour before I pass out in front of all of you guys of hunger. That's not a good look. Um, so uh, let's start this thing off. Uh, I guess we'll start it off um, with you know the bigger, the biggest news out of everything. Uh, obviously, two major things happened on SmackDown, and. You know, the WWE doesn't usually do these things. They're not you know, usually the bait and switch kind of, uh, you know, do the bait and switch kind of a thing um, or make major decisions on a day before the uh, a big show or the last show before a big show. But uh, the WWE did two major things. One was reactionary and one was, I mean, kind of surprising to me. Um, the one that was reactionary was obviously taking Becky Lynch out of the Survivor Series match with Nia Jax, replacing her with Charlotte Flair. Uh, the one that was kind of a little bit surprising was that Daniel Bryan is your new WWE champion. He defeated AJ Styles and turned heel in the process. Um, so I, I want to start off with the Daniel Bryan, AJ Styles thing real quick, because I feel like the major story is Becky and Nia and I feel, and, and that whole situation, everything that comes out of that. Cause I have my own theory about everything, not about what happened, but what's going to happen in the future. Um, so my, you know, Daniel Bryan beating AJ Styles was quite a surprise to me. When I found out that the show, that the match was being booked on the show, I went, huh, well, that's interesting. I don't know why they wanted to do this again. And I figured this was going to be one of those things where, oh, Bryan and Miz are arguing, Survivor Series, you know, team captains, Miz interferes in the match for some reason, uh, leads to a whole big, you know, scuffle at the end, you know, just a blow off kind of a thing, but just kind of just show that, you know, another AJ Styles, Daniel Bryan match, because it's something that everybody's clamoring to see, but no, WWE put the belt on Daniel Bryan, um, turned him heel, and AJ Styles really needs to protect his nuts, because the guy's been kicking the balls over the past uh, year more than I think anybody else I've ever seen in professional wrestling, and I mean, I'm talking about going through the Attitude Era, where low blows were just something that happened in the middle of a match just because, so uh, yeah, AJ either needs to wear a cup, or just, you know, really just protect his nuts, because he's just getting them rocked, like almost nightly. Um, I like Daniel Bryan turning heel. I like him as a uh, as a heel. I, I like the babyface Daniel Bryan. Don't get me wrong. I, I mean, the Daniel Bryan poster right over my shoulder. He's one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. Um, I've followed his career since Ring of Honor, and I've always liked him being a smarmy ass heel. Um, that's one of those things I think that Bryan does well. I think Bryan's a really good heel. I think he's going to get to show it. You know, um, back before uh, you know he he got the whole. Yes movement, he was doing a lot of the no stuff, and uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, You know, he talked about how uh, he changed the name from the LaBelle lock to the no lock because he was so much better than Gene LaBelle, and it didn't need to be named after him, and he was, you know, played up that smarmy jerk heel character, and I really liked it. Um, I enjoyed Daniel Bryan's heel work, and I think we're going to all enjoy Daniel Bryan as a heel now subsequently, I'm a little scared to know that a guy who had to retire because of a, cu- a concussion problem, I can speak to, uh, you know well tonight, has to face Brock Lesnar, a guy who I've never seen anybody just so recklessly throw people in my entire life. Those poor Singh brothers got tossed harder than I've ever seen anybody get tossed in a WWE ring. It was scary to watch. Um the, the one guy seemed to get it worse than the other. Uh, the guy who got the first and then subsequent third German suplex really got, uh, took them pretty hard and uh, kind of difficult to watch. Um, now we have to see that with Daniel Bryan. And is that something I really want to see? I'm not clamoring for it. A lot of people were saying, oh, I want to see Bryan versus Brock. Man, I've been scared of seeing Bryan versus Brock. Absolutely scared. 
And Brock can give Daniel Bryan a concussion like that. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what they do and how they do it. Um, it's a cla- it's a heel versus heel world you know, uh, world title versus world title uh, holder match. Not something you see every day, and I think it's a kind of interesting uh, concept. Um, and, you know, the Survivor Series implications were really big. Now we have Brian versus uh, Brock Lesnar. You know, and a couple of other big matches on the card. I mean, a notable heel versus heel match, too, is AOP versus The Bar. And, you know, that's going to be interesting because it, here's two monster heel tag teams that are just going to try to run through each other. And, uh, I mean, if anybody's going to get a good match at AOP, I think it's going to be Sheamus and Cesaro. Say what you want. Mm-hmm. I think Sheamus mm-hmm. is severely underrated. Um, I know a lot of people don't like him. I know that maybe they th- figured he was pushed like too, uh, too much just because of the whole uh, friendship he has with Triple H. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, long day at work. Sorry about that. Um, but uh, you know, I, I get the I, the idea. I, I understand where people are coming from when it comes to stuff like that. But you know, uh, I think uh, Sheamus has paid his dues, and I think that uh, him and Cesaro as a tag team are great. Uh, I'm looking forward to this, and this is going to be the best match we're ever going to see AOP in. Um, they, you know, there's not too many teams on Raw that's really going to, um, I don't know, that really excite me to see who who can take down AOP. Um, uh, and, you know, Arthur, I, I, I mean, I agree. Uh, I think Daniel Bryan's going to be classified as the heel, 100%. Uh, and I think that the crowd's going to explode for him no matter what. I, and at this point, I think we learned at WrestleMania, we learned at um, uh, every other show that, that he's been on. It doesn't matter who Brock Lesnar faces. The fans aren't cheering for him anymore. They want him to go away. Um, damage control is the only reason why Brock Lesnar is heavyweight champion right now. That's it. It's simple as that. It's damage control. Um. So, uh, you know, I, I'm actually really interested in the classic five-on-five tag team Survivor Series match. I know the tag teams aren't too, like, great and, you know, they aren't, like, much much fun. I mean, I would have really preferred to see, uh, you know, Fandango be healthy and Breezango be in a match like this. I, you know, but, I, I mean, I, I just I hate that it's relegated to the pre-show. I think it's going to be a fun show. I mean, the Colognes are going to be on pay-per-view for the first time in forever. I don't think anybody's looking forward to that, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of good things that are, that are, that are coming out of Survivor Series. I like the classic, uh, Raw versus SmackDown five on five match. I think a couple of guys could have been, you know, could have been swapped out a little bit. I'm not the biggest Jeff Hardy fan and, uh, you know, being in that match. And I would have much rather to see that Styles got that match instead, but that's just me. Um, especially cause he got taken out, but, uh, I have a feeling he's going to interfere in that in that match against uh, Brock and Daniel. I just had that feeling. I think he's going to go after both guys, to be honest. Um, the, uh, the Colognes and the Usos are going to be the Survivors. It could be. It really could be. I mean, I can see the WWE pulling something like that. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see the good brothers, Gallows and Anderson, getting back out there on pay-per-view. I'm, uh, you know, I, I like seeing these guys who we don't see too often get these big matches, get put on a pay-per-view, get to show what they're about. Maybe it enhances them, gets them, gets them a push. I mean, we're, what, a year away, uh, removed from everybody thinking that the Colognes actually quit the company? And now they're on pay-per-view. Um, you know, everybody says they don't do anything with the club, and now they're on pay-per-view. I know it's not a big spot. I know it's on the pre-show, but I really like to see, um, I, I like those matches. I like the ones back in the eighties with the five teams. It, it was a lot of fun. You know, just a lot of guys out there, the, you know, the apron, I mean, the guys could have reached out over like the opposing apron and just started beating on other guys. Cause there were so many guys there. It was fun to see. Um, and yeah, you know, uh, you know, the world champion versus world champion match is going to be fun. Um, they were made for us. They were built for Japan. I I, I know that, uh, you know, I, and I get it. But they're here now. They wanted the money. They wanted the payday. And um, I think that if the WWE put a little bit more trust in them, they would have, uh, you know, actually done something. But that's the WWE's fault for not putting trust in some of these guys who are proven workers. Um, now I, I'm not gonna lie. The match I was looking most forward to was the man. Versus the baddest bitch on the planet. You know, Ronda Rousey versus uh, versus Charlotte has a good ring to it. But Ronda Rousey versus Becky Lynch was shaping up to being one of the best matches, uh, you know, bar none of the year. 
Now, I know it's crazy to say that because Ronda Rousey hasn't been there for, for a while, but I think Becky would have pulled out uh, an unbelievable match out of, uh, out of Ronda. Now, we've been talking a lot about the fact that Ronda Rousey and Charlotte could have made event to WrestleMania this coming year. Um, we're going to get a great match. We're going to get an excellent match. It's a wrestle, you know, you said it's a WrestleMania match. Charlotte versus Ronda is going to be great, but man, it sucks to think about what could have been. Becky Lynch has been, and you know, with ever with all puns intended, straight fire. She's been the man. She's been the most entertaining person on the WWE roster. Man or woman. I don't think there's anybody in their right mind who can sit there and say, uh, you know, who are sitting there and saying, if you're unless you're absolutely sexist, like, man, I was literally looking forward to this match, you know, uh, even though they're two girls. No, everybody's been sitting there. Everybody that I've, I've talked to, I've, you know, um, every comment I've read have all been saying, this is the match I've been looking forward to. Becky, Ronda is going to kick ass. And now we're not going to see it. Um, yet. We're not going to see it yet. So, this is going to sound really weird. First and foremost, uh, I mean, Arthur, you're here, and I appreciate you. Uh, thank you. Um, for anybody else who knows me from being on the Dave Knows Wrestling live stream, you know that usually I am a lot more uh, protective of WWE superstars, of um, things that go on in the ring, thing, you know, way some of these things are booked, you know, um, and I don't hate anybody. I don't hate Nia Jax. I think that she's good for what she does. But yeah, there's been a lot of instances where she has injured people. But by that same point, uh, the, the one thing I worry about that is, is their styles clashing, you know, Hercules Warrior, two goats running into each other. Yeah, I mean, I, I do, you know, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Um, but I, I think that they're going to work a good match around it. Um, but my thing is, is this, you know, when it comes to Nia, I, I think that Nia is good at what she does. Yes. Has she hurt people? Sure. But, uh, Disco Inferno, Glenn Gilberti put out a treat and he, a tweet and he said, you know, wrestling fans have been, you know, excited for more hard, uh, you know, more of a hardcore style of wrestling, more of a, I'm trying to think of the exact word he used. Um, but he basically what he's saying is that this stiff style gets, you know, this is awesome chance in Japan. And then all of a sudden somebody turns around and accidentally pops somebody in the face and all of a sudden they're the most, you know, that you have the right to sit there and call these, you know, this girl uh, absolutely unsafe in the ring. Wrestling in itself is getting more and more unsafe. It is what it is. I don't blame Nia for this. Obviously, either Nia's a complete bitch or she's really playing up the heel character. But I am sure that Becky's okay with it. But man, she's been putting, putting out some, you know, pretty badass tweets about this you know i this is gonna this could lead to something pretty big my whole thing is this we've seen what charlotte uh i'm sorry we've seen you know where becky was headed we've seen her trajectory there was no slowing her down but i have a feeling that despite this and look i'm not saying that Nia, you know, gets a, a get out of jail free card. I think that you know there is heat on her. I think she deserves a little of it. I think she needs to be a little bit more safe. This is a brawl. The shot that she hit her with wasn't even caught on camera. You know, you got to know in those situations, battle royals, things like that. You're not swinging for the fences there. You're just making it look snug enough to you know look okay. Because the focus isn't going to always be on you. Sure, it's going to be on Becky a little bit more because Becky was leading the charge, but. You got to pull back a little bit there. And that is Nia's fault. I don't think she did it intentionally. And in all honesty, it looked like to me, Becky kind of caught her, a, 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 you know, one or two times. I think Nia might have just got pissed, turned around and just threw and threw a shot. Didn't exactly know that it was going to land in Becky's eye. Maybe it was trying to like maybe hit her with a forearm across, you know, across the cheekbone or maybe like, you know, in the, into the shoulder blade like some of them, you know, kind of do, uh, you know, something like that and got a little bit too high. Um. I think this injury is going to be the best thing for Becky Lynch. Uh, I kind of disagree. Nobody was calling for Seth Rollins' head like Nia. He exploded John Cena's face, destroyed Finn Balor's shoulder, and almost killed Sting in less than nine months. I agree! 
I agree. And we know Finn's not unsafe. I'm sorry. We know Seth's not uh, unsafe. We know he, you know, people called him out a little bit. Bret Hart called him out a little bit. But for the most part, everybody was like, man, you know, accidents happen. But for some reason, when it comes to Nia Jax, and I get it, she's hurt people in the past before. But for some reason, people don't want to let this go. Is this a big deal? Sure. It screwed up some plans. But this isn't like the be-all, end-all. And I don't think we should be sitting here and persecuting somebody because we're not wrestlers. What's up, Harry? Good to see you, man. Um, But we're not wrestlers. We don't do this for a living. I don't know how to throw a punch. And I'm an actor. I've learned on set from stuntmen how to throw punches. But I don't know how to throw a solid punch to hit somebody with to make it look convincing enough and which is a completely different art in professional wrestling than it is acting. And if you listen to um, Chris Jericho's podcast with Cody Rhodes about when he was on uh, season one of Arrow, he decked the he decked the stunt guy in the face, and the guy was like, "Why did you hit me?" And that's a completely different thing. So I don't know how to do that. Nia accidentally punched Becky in the face. It happens. But as crazy as it sounds, this is going to be the best thing for Becky. <laughs> I, I, yeah, you're right. You're right. If she wasn't really, if she wasn't, um, and this is the thing about the guy, people on the internet. The internet now exploded. Oh, the only reason she got pushed to the place where she was, the only reason why she has her job is because she's The Rock's cousin. I'm sure The Rock's had a lot of cousins that wanted to be wrestlers and aren't employed by the WWE. She's got a good look. She's got a good attitude. She's got, a, you know, a, 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 you know, she's got an interesting character. I like Nia. I, I mean, that's just me. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe it's because I like everybody. But I've never had a problem with Nia. I don't think she intentionally hurt Becky. And I think that this whole situation got blown out of proportion. But like I was saying, this is going to be the best thing for Becky ever, because she's either going to a be able to parlay this into as soon as my face gets healed I'm going to come back even more badass than ever or and I know this is crazy but hear me out I hope they strip Becky of the belt now I know no one really wants to see that but this works on a couple of different levels strip Becky of the belt she can't compete for, you know, a defender title within, you know, a 30-day period. Just even though she's going to be fine, don't let her wrestle. Strip her of the belt. Hold a tournament. Have somebody win it. And have Becky say, well, you know what? When I come back, I'm the first contender. And Paige is going to be all about it. Sure, Becky, you're the, the first contender. For the, you know, whoever wins it. Oscar wins the belt. Um, and, and, and Arthur, I agree. I think Nia definitely worked the punch. But, um... Oscar wins the belt, right? That brings us, you know, we're in November. Brings us to December. Shenanigans and tomfoolery happens. And Oscar beats Becky. Now Becky's got her head down. Paige is like, you're not getting another shot at the title. You've had your shot. That was it. And then it's January. And Becky's like, well, fine. If I don't get my shot there, at a title there, I'm going to do it at the Royal Rumble. And Becky wins the Royal Rumble. Now Becky's got the choice. She can either face the SmackDown Women's Champion or the Raw Women's Champion. And she comes out and she cuts this great promo like you know Becky can pull off. And she's like, you know, I I really wanted to come out here and win that SmackDown Live title again and take it from Asuka because she never beat me for it. She only beat me, you know, in in one match. And if I was still still the champ, I would have still had a rematch. But it's all right because I beat 29 other women. I became the winner of the Royal Rumble. I became the number one contender. And now I'm going to come out and choose to face Ronda Rousey. And talk about how she has unfinished business with Ronda. How, you know, it's not about being on Raw. She's never held a Raw Women's Championship. And she's out to show and prove to everybody that she can beat Ronda Rousey like she was going to do at Survivor Series. Nia Jax comes out. Words are exchanged. We have a Nia versus Becky match in uh, in February at a pay-per-view. And Becky beats Nia and taps her out. Punches her in the face. You know, really hard a few times to really just you know drive that thing you know uh, you know home to get that you know whole story under uh, you know uh, under wraps. And the main event of WrestleMania is going to be Becky Lynch versus Ronda Rousey 
armbar versus armbar. Uh, you know, the man versus the baddest bitch on the planet. And that's it. It main events the show. That's the main event. Not the Daniel Bryan or AJ Styles or whoever is the world champion at the time. Not Brock Lesnar or, or you know, uh, Braun Strowman or whoever else is the world champion at that time. That's the main event of the show. And I think Becky can be that character to carry. And, you know, by the way, the, the entire time, I don't want to see Becky off TV once. I want to see her on commentary, you know, during the tournaments. I want to see her, you know, talk the entire time and come out and cut promos. I wanted to be Stone Cold Steve Austin when Stone Cold broke his neck. This could be the biggest thing for Becky Lynch. Because now, instead of her being, uh, Charlotte being in the main event, because they had to put Charlotte in the Survivor Series match, it's now going to be Becky in the main event at WrestleMania. And I think she's going to kill it. Whether she wins or she loses, she will go down as the first female superstar to ever main event the biggest WWE show ever. That's good enough for me. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's that, that's where I stand. Um, I'm also really excited about tomorrow night. NXT War Games, you know, the card is really good. Uh, I like the build for the Black Gargano match. I really like the fact that Velveteen Dream is getting a shot. Um, Ciampa is just on another level. He's the best world champion in any company, bar none, hands down. I don't care what anybody says. He's the best worker. He's the best pro guy on the mic. He's killing it. I, I just love everything about Tommaso Ciampa. Um, the War Games match is going to be great. I'm a little upset about the fact that I really think that Pete Dunn being on the UK brand, he should kind of stick to over there. And I don't, don't get me wrong, I love Pete Dunn. And I'm glad he's in this match, but I think it would have been better if EC3 was in the match. And that's just me. I might be, you know, crazy. A lot of people might sit there and tell me that I'm a little bit nuts. But I just think EC3, EC3 deserved to be on that spot. Um, I think NXT War Games is going to blow the doors off Survivor Series. I think that the first, you know, the Cruiserweight title match and um, the five-on-five tag team Survivor Series match being on the pre-show is actually a good thing because I think that we'll get two really good matches to lead us into Survivor Series. I predict that Survivor Series is going to be a fun show. I like the classic Survivor Series matches. I wish they would do more of them. Uh, Harry, I hope you beat Dave in predictions because uh, I like to see Dave lose. That's just me. Um, And I know that a lot of people probably think that me and Dave probably don't get along (laughs) outside of our show because of how much we argue. It's actually the exact opposite. Uh, I don't think me and Dave have actually ever gotten mad at each other for the two years that we've known each other just zero times but uh you know we just we differ on a few things dave is more of a into a certain style of wrestling and i look i'm a wwe fan and i won't hide that you know i don't shy away from it i love new japan for all intents and purposes, New Japan should be my favorite professional wrestling company because they're everything that I like, but I've just been a WWE fan for so long that they're always going to be my number one. It's just, it is what it is. Um, so another thing I wanted to kind of cover a little bit before I go, because I am starving, and if I don't eat something soon, I might pass out right here in front of you guys. Um, on the Dave Knows live stream today, I was talking to a few of, uh, of you guys. I know Arthur and Harry, you guys, guys probably both saw this. Um, I was talking about doing it my own YouTube channel. And uh, a lot of people, you know, had said they were going to subscribe and stuff like that. And I'm going to give a link and stuff like that on here um, in a little while once I get a little bit um, prepared. I know Harry already subscribed and I appreciate that, Harry. Thank you. Um, but, you know, um, it, it's a difficult endeavor to take, to, to undertake. Um, you know... Dave does a great job on his, but, um, you know, for me, I'd love to do a lot more live streams. <laughs> yeah, we are friends. Me and Dave are very good friends. Uh, Dave is actually, a, a, you know, from what you, I mean, I know you guys only see him on, uh, on screen. Dave's actually a very good person. Um, you know, I, I've, obviously you can tell that, and he's been a very good friend and a mentor to me in a lot of different ways when it comes to a lot of this stuff. Um, Dave teach, taught at the school that I went to. Um, so Dave has been there from day one for me, helping me, um, achieve my goal. So, um, you know, I, I appreciate Dave 
more than I think you guys even know. And Dave's helped me more than uh, than you guys. I think anybody really knows. And in all honesty, Dave's going to help me a lot when I try to really you know get the YouTube channel together. And uh, when I do it, I want to do things like this. I want to get a bunch of people online. I want to do like what we do with Dave and do a live stream, talk about different things, you know, chat about wrestling. I'm also a big football fan, so if anybody's into the NFL. You know, I want to do the same things with that. I'm going to bring guests in. I'm going to have my friends come in and, you know, talk wrestling, talk football, even maybe talk comics and, uh, you know, movies and stuff like that. Just anything geeky or nerdy. Uh, review some video games and stuff like that. You know, I want to just do it all. I want my ch- my channel to be a one-stop shop for everything that I'm into. And hopefully all you guys are into that too. Uh, Arthur, I agree in some ways that New Japan is pretentious. Um, but I don't think New Japan is actually pretentious. I think that some of the, the, the New Japan wrestling fans are pretentious. I think wrestling fans in general are pretentious. I think that um, you know, I get shit on a lot for uh, being a person who... Uh, <laughs> I, I mean... I, fair enough. Fair enough. I, 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 get, I, I mean, I understand where you're coming from, Arthur. He likes who he likes. I, I just don't see anything in Liv Morgan at all. I mean, and... Uh, but everybody has different tastes in women. I mean, look, uh, I, I, you know, you know, if I want to like talk about the women on the WWE roster where I'm attracted to, we all know I've, you know, I picked Becky Lynch and Peyton Royce. Those are my my one and two, and they might not be yours. Um, Harry's gonna, you know, talk to me about how I'm a jerk for not liking Nikki Bella, and I don't think that Nikki Bella is unattractive. I just don't think she's the most attractive girl in the world. That's just not who she is for me. Um, I was a big Emma fan. I think Emma may be my fa- one of my favorites of all time. I think Paige is gorgeous too, despite all the things that she's been through. I think she's absolutely beautiful. But that's that is what it is. Um, so getting back to the YouTube show, um, you know what I want to do is I also, you know, I want to open my show, especially my show and these live streams as well, up to you know as many different topics as we can as we want to talk about. I have a vast knowledge of of professional wrestling it's been you know my biggest love for my you know pretty much my you know for the longest thing it's probably the thing i've loved more than anything else for as long of a period of time as i've loved it um i've been watching wrestling since i was three years old religiously um going back watching old vhs tapes of, of, of uh you know the 85 you know you know, 85, uh, uh, wrestling, you know, primetime wrestling and stuff like that. All the stuff that my dad had recorded on VHS, um, all the WrestleManias, the, the first ever Survivor Series, the first ever SummerSlam, the first ever Royal Rumble. I've watched them all over and over and over again. There are spots I have memorized from some Royal Rumbles cause it's my favorite, my favorite match. And I've watched them so many times. Um, and I don't want to just talk about current the current wrestling product. I want to sit here and talk about some things in the past, some of the fun stuff that we saw, some memories and stuff. So I'm very much open to you guys, to all of you guys, to come on here, come onto the Slam Sessions page here on Facebook, and comment on it. You know, write a, you know write a comment in you know, on the page and say, hey Albert, why don't you live stream and cover this? And I'll do my research and I'll do it. I'll set a date and we'll invite everybody and we'll have a, you know a bunch of people come on and talk about you know whatever topic you guys want to talk about. I'm very open to fan participation. I know that you know as a fan of a lot of different podcasts, I'd love to just you know be on the other end of that you know one day just sit in and you know be the third man in a uh, you know uh, something to wrestle with or 83 weeks or the major wrestling figures podcast because I'm a big wrestling figure collector. Um, I'd love to sit in on some of those. So what I'd love to do is that I'd love to hear you, have you guys sit on in on here with you know with me and talk you know to me and ask as many questions and make as many comments as you guys want mm-hmm. because that's what I'm all about. That's what I like. That's what I'm into. That's what you know. And I really like um, uh, uh, audience participation. Arthur, that is a great. I, I it's so funny. You read my mind. I want to do a pod, you know, a show strictly about announcers. I think Gorilla Monsoon is the most underrated play-by-play announcer in the history of professional wrestling. I don't think Gorilla Monsoon gets his just due at all. I think everybody talks about Jim Ross, and everybody talks about Gordon Soley, and everybody talks about um, you know a, a, a bunch of other people. But man, I loved Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby. You know, there would be no comedic heel um, commentator if it wasn't for Bobby the Brain Heenan. He was a great manager and a better commentator. Um. Without Bobby Heenan, there's no Jerry Lawler or a Corey Graves. You know, but, you know, that's it. It is what it is. So that's a great idea. Um, so what I want you guys to do is 
Please share this page with your friends. Invite your friends to come like this. Please give me ideas for stuff that you guys want to see. And I guarantee that I will deliver on every request that you guys have if it's possible. I mean, you know, there are certain ones that I might say no to just because maybe it won't, they, you know, I can't devote enough time, but we'll cram it in with something else. Or maybe, you know, look, if it's a little bit of, you know, of a off color topic, I mean, obviously, you know, you guys know what we should be and shouldn't be talking about here. You know, I'm not going to sit here and have uh, an hour podcast, you know, objectifying women of the WWE and stuff like that. Cause I've been asked by certain people to do that. And it's weird. Um, but yeah, um, once I get a good enough following here and once I really get things set, I'm going to set up a YouTube channel. The last movie Stanley was in, was it? Oh, uh, 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 Harry, you are right, but not right at the same time. The last movie that he was in before he passed away, yes, was a DC movie. Um, but the la- he has filmed his cameos for, um, wow, the words are just slipping my mind right now, and that's terrible. He did film his cameos uh, for uh, the, the next Avengers movie and for um, Captain Marvel. Wow. I don't know why it took me so long to get that out of, out of my mouth, but... Um, uh, yeah, so he, I know that was his, the last movie he was in before he passed away, but he does have two more cameos coming up. Um, so yeah, so the idea is that, you know, to get, um, um, I, I, all right, here's the thing. I, we, we can dig into this really quick because I don't want to go crazy. Um, Jim Ross is my second favorite play-by-play announcer, and it's not by much. It's right there with Gorilla Monsoon. Um, Joey Styles is my favorite because I thought Joey Styles knew more about wrestling. At least he portrayed that he knew more about wrestling than everybody else. Like he went into the back and he talked to everybody and he said, Hey, okay, uh, Chris Chetty, what are you doing today? Oh, that's what you're doing. Cool. What do you call that? Great. So now I'm going to call it, you know, call that on the pay-per-view. He knew all the holds. He knew all the moves. And I love that. I love Gorilla Monsoon because I passed some some classes in school because of Gorilla Monsoon's commentating. How many people know what MCL stands for? I know it stands for medial collateral ligament because Gorilla Monsoon would say stuff like that on TV. And that's how I learned a lot of stuff about, about that kind of stuff. Gorilla Monsoon was great. Uh, but Jim Ross, I think that it's just his passion was the biggest thing for me. Uh, I look at Jim Ross during you know the Attitude Era and I see and I hear him, you know, Announcing, you know, know, Austin coming out, stone cold, stone cold, stone cold. My God, he hit him with a stunner. Like, it's just, it's that stuff that's ingrained in your mind. And he's been there for so many major, so many major parts of WWE that his voice is the soundtrack of what the WWE is. But that's something that I want, I I really do want to do an announcer show. I don't want to dig into this right now because I really want to do a straight announcer show just about everybody and we can have a big discussion about play-by-play guys, about um, color guys, and see you know where we get. Um, but yeah, so anyway, so like I was saying, the plan is is to get as many people here on Facebook to announce my uh, my YouTube show, uh, my, me starting the YouTube channel, have everybody come from Facebook to subscribe to the YouTube channel so we can seamlessly work from here to YouTube and do all these live streams on YouTube. That's my goal. Um, and please feel free, share this video with your friends, uh, share this page with your friends. Um, every time Dave goes live, tell them to come on here and like everything that I do, just like I do every week and, um, keep supporting everybody who does this kind of stuff. I don't do this because I get paid for it. And I don't do this because, you know, it's a career for me. I don't make a dime out of doing this. I do it because I love doing it, and I do it because I have passion for it. I do it because this is what I want to do for, for a living. You know, I, I'm not sitting here and saying I had an idea. I was the first person with the idea for a podcast, but man, I might have been. And back in the day when I really wanted to go to broadcasting school, I had an idea of man, it would be great if there was a way you can just have a wrestling talk show. And that was my what I wanted to do, and now I get to do it. Um, cause I used to listen to sports talk radio all the time and now I get to, you know, do a wrestling radio show basically, but it's called a podcast. Um, it's what I want to do for a living. I want to do broadcasting and, um, I do this because 
this is fun to me because this is what I've always wanted to do. If I can't make a dime out of this, I'd still do it because I love it. So thank you guys. Thank you guys for supporting me. Please pass this video, pass this page around, get more support that we can, and then we'll build an empire together. And you guys can always know that you were here on the ground floor. And remember, submit your ideas. Tell me what you guys want to hear. I will set a date and we'll cover it all. Thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. This has been a lot of fun. I will see you guys next time. Actually, I'll see you know Arthur, um, Harry. I'll see you guys on Monday uh, on the live stream. And uh, th again, thank you guys for your support. I'll see you soon.